everybody it's Friday the 13th so it's time to talk about something relatable to Friday the 13th I've reviewed a few of the Friday the 13th movies in the past but today I'm going to rank them I sat down and watched all 12 of these Friday the 13th movies and I'm here today to tell you which one's the worst one because there's a couple of them and which one's the best one because there's a couple of them so I am truly excited to get this video started guys so starting off with the worst Friday the 13th film the worst one Jason Goes to Hell was released in 1993 a movie based around a guy that just is unstoppable and you cannot kill him this movie really seems to outdo that. This movie really manages to out ridiculous the rest of the whole entire series because it's really kind of intriguing about a guy who could just not really die and this movie just takes it to the extreme. This movie opens up with the FBI blowing up Jason's heart and he survives. You can really tell where this movie is going to go. There's a lot of weird scenes in here, especially like a demonic Jason baby. And there's some weird backstory, like a relative is the only person that could really kill Jason. There's a lot of notable deaths, a lot of fun deaths, like every other Jason movie. But this movie is ridiculous. The storyline is dumb. It just took place so long after the rest of the series was pretty much done and over with. They wanted to bring back another Jason movie. And you got Jason Goes to Hell. Body count for Jason Goes to Hell was 21. Here's my favorite death from Jason Goes to Hell. Alright guys, coming in number 11, the second to worst Jason film is Jason X, which was released in 2001. Why was this movie even made? Years, years, years after Jason goes to hell, Jason is sent to space. Yes, he is sent to space. When you get sent to space, your franchise has died. It is over. Don't do anything else. Space is like the last, it's like the last frontier. You don't want to go there. It's like the worst place ever for a movie franchise. This movie is like a hundred years into the future and Camp Crystal Lake has turned into a research facility. Research facility. Really? After trying to kill Jason many, many times, they decided to, hey, let's freeze him and shoot that guy up to space. Well, future space travelers find Jason and, you know, things happen. It's dumb. It's like, it's so weird. A movie that, like, a killer goes to space and is frozen. It is just wreaking havoc in space. It's so stupid. The body count for Jason X was... 21. Jason ended up dying, burning up in the atmosphere on Earth 2. This is my favorite death from Jason X. Alright guys, number 10 is Friday the 13th Part 5, which was released in 1985. This was considered the new beginning. There's a lot of that. New beginning. Uh, I can't really say much about this movie. It's it's bad. It's uh, it's a new beginning. Why? It's 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 why. The body count for Friday the Thirteenth was twenty two. Jason died in a bed of spikes, even though he wasn't really the real killer of this story. Here's my favorite death from Friday the Thirteenth: A New Beginning. Cut it out. Alright guys, coming at number 9 is Friday the 13th Part 7, New Blood, which was released in which was released in 1988. This has to be one of the most ridiculous Jason movies. The way that they end up killing Jason is so absurd, and the way they bring him back in this movie, I mean, Jason can only kill so many campers, and so when they have to do something weird to have it be fun again, it's, when it comes across like New Blood, how this movie was, it was just really bad. He ended up dying because a psychic uses her powers to raise her abusive, drunk father to come out of the lake just to bring Jason back down with him. Yes, that is how this movie ends. It's, oh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was something. The body count for A New Blood was 
16. Like I said, he was drowned by a revived, abusive father. Here's my favorite death from Friday the 13th Part 7, A New Blood. Alright guys, next up on the list is Friday the 13th Part 3, 3D. This movie was released in 1982 and the success of this franchise just means they're pumping one out every single year. This is set days after Friday the 13th Part 2. He's injured and he's looking for some new clothes. And that's where he picks up his iconic hockey mask, which was pretty cool. And that's about it. That's like the only interesting thing in this movie. The body count for Friday 13 Part 3 was 12. The way Jason dies in this is that he's briefly hung and then a machete to the head. Here's my favorite death from Friday 13th Part 3. Alright guys, next up on my list is Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. This was released in 1989 and surprisingly, with its really stupid storyline, I somewhat enjoyed this film. I mean, it really makes no sense why Jason has to get on a boat to go to Manhattan to kill a bunch of people. Why can't you just do it in the pleasure of your own backyard? Why do you gotta take it to Manhattan? I guess the only thing that really saves this movie is the hilarious deaths in this movie. I'm going to show you guys in a few seconds what my favorite one is. This is the part in the franchise where they're completely running out of ideas. I mean, did you not sit down with other people and like discuss like better ideas? Like just one person said Manhattan and they all went with it. The body count for Jason Takes Manhattan is 17. Jason dies by drowning in acidic waste in the bottom of New York. The whole movie is worth it for just this one death. My favorite scene of Jason Takes Manhattan. Alright guys, coming number 6 is Friday 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. Of course he does. He lives. When doesn't he live? He always lives. Jason Lives. Jason Lives was released in 1986 and he was pretty much dead until some idiot came along dug up his body, and he was struck by lightning. That's how he's brought back to life. Jason lives. Oh, oh, wait a second. I forgot to tell you. He's got newfound powers. He's always been capable of absurd strength, but this movie just takes it up a notch. It's just, like, extra powers. It's like Jason Statham on crank. He's got, like, crazy powers. He's really angry in this movie. And sometimes this movie is actually pretty funny with how he kills certain people and then he's just like, like whatever, kind of like, it's, it's fun, it's fun for me. It's like, he doesn't really have any feelings about it. And so this movie has, but this movie breathes some like fun into it. It's enjoyable at times, um, but this movie just, this is like where the movie just went off the rails and just like they did not care about like the story at all. They just gave up. The body count for Jason Lives is 18. He dies by being tied to the bottom of the lake. Here's my favorite death from Jason Lives. <laughs> All right, now going through like the list of Jason movies, a lot of people don't consider this to be a Jason movie just because it has someone else in it, but I do consider this to be a Jason film. And the next one on the list is Freddy vs. Jason. TBH. This is the first Jason film I've ever seen. It was released when I was in about fifth grade. So I saw the film, really, really loved it uh, for a couple reasons uh, when I was younger. Uh, but put that aside, I thought this film was really enjoyable mixing Freddy and Jason together. I thought that uh, it might be a little weird to see someone who can control dreams face off someone who can't, but they all. But they both had their own abilities and they both utilized them very well facing off against each other. I thought the storyline was okay for mixing these two together and why they're even together in the first place. But I loved this movie growing up. I watched it a lot. So that's why it sits here on this list. The body count for Freddy vs. Jason was 16. Jason really didn't even die in this film. Here's my favorite death from Freddy vs. Jason.
All right, coming in at number four is the reboot, Friday the 13th, which was released in 2009 on Friday the 13th, which I thought was pretty fun. I saw this one in theaters, and I like it. I like it a lot. You can really tell the people behind this reboot actually cared about the franchise. There was a lot of nods to the original franchise. Uh, that I really did like and they're trying to make Jason more scarier in this movie and I think they really did that well. I mean he ran faster which is scary alone. A big man running towards you. He was angrier. He was more brutal. Instead of just walking towards his prey he just chased down after them. The first 20 minutes are really really gritty, really, really good. The whole rest of the movie is okay but the first 20 minutes is awesome. There were some really cool deaths and the total body count for this movie was 13. Jason dies by being tossed into a wood chipper. Here's my favorite death from the reboot, Friday the 13th. Alright guys, coming in at number 3 is Friday the 13th Part 2, which was released in 1981. Jason wasn't even the main villain in the first film, so he doesn't really become the main villain until the second flick. This movie was a lot like the first one. It was very suspenseful, it was intense, they brought the most iconic horror villain of all time to life and it was actually a lot creepier with that bag over his face more than the mask. I think that's much more disturbing than the mask and kind of believable. Uh, so I do like Friday the 13th Part 2 a lot. It was very similar to the first one, very suspenseful. The body count for Friday the 13th Part 2 was 14. Jason dies by getting a machete to the arm. Not too extreme. Here's my favorite death from Friday the 13th Part 2. Alright guys, coming in at number 2 is Friday the 13th Part 4, a new chapter. I'm done with these titles, I'm done with them. This was released in 1984 and I remember watching this movie a lot growing up past Friday past Freddy vs. Jason. This is one of like the ones I watched the most. This franchise was, for me, it was like at this point it was like coming to an end. Like there was not much exciting going on. It's very the same thing. But they did breathe some creative energy into this movie. Plot twist, it really wasn't the final chapter. This movie's got Corey Feldman in it before Goonies. It's got Corey Feldman in all of his glory. This movie's very fun. It's very self-aware to the point where even with the ridiculous scenes with Corey Feldman and how he tries to act like a little Jason. Even though it was funny, it's very self-aware, it knows what it wanted to be. This movie just overall was confident. This is when he found like his real signature mask in this film. He doesn't really like stand in the back in the shadows anymore. He's like just tearing through this place and just, you know, he's come to play. He's just, he's doing whatever he can to kill people. The body count for Friday the 13th part 4, the final chapter, was 13. Jason dies by a machete. How ironic. A machete. Here's my favorite death from Friday the 13th Part 4, the final chapter. <laughs> well guys, there's just one film left. What do you think it is? What do you think it is, really? I haven't talked about this one. It's Friday the 13th. Just Friday the 13th, the first one. The first one is the best one. This was released in 1980, and to me, this is the best film. This movie doesn't even have Jason until the end. It's his mother, Pamela Voorhees, that is killing all of these people, and they don't even show it. That's why I think this movie is so great. It's just so suspenseful that if you watched it for the first time, you didn't know who the killer was. That would just blow my mind that it's a woman. It's a, it's a, a mother rather than like some big buff guy tr trying to kill everybody. The storyline is actually very interesting. Uh, the mother is going around killing everybody because uh, the camp counselors did not pay attention to her son and her son drowned. But he comes out of the boat and just like, but he comes out of the water and just kills everybody afterwards. Uh, so I really like the storyline here. I like how it's very suspenseful. It's intriguing that this mother's just going through the camp and just killing everybody. We really don't know who it is as an audience. He's just a straight slasher film and I love, love, love slasher films. Before it even got into Supernatural and sending him off to space and going to hell, it was a simple slasher film and I loved it. 
This movie is unique and it holds up because it's actually trying to be scary and not anything else. It's just trying to be scary and it works so well. The body count for Friday the 13th was 9. The villain in here, Pamela Voorhees, dies by decapitation. My favorite death from Friday the 13th was this. Well guys, I'm done. I'm done talking about Friday the 13th. That was a long video. But I had a lot of fun talking about these movies. And I actually had a lot of fun sitting down and watching them just straight through. I binged them. Not all in one day, but I had a lot of fun with it. So guys, what is your favorite Friday the 13th film? And what is your least favorite Friday the 13th film? Hope you guys enjoy your Friday the 13th. Watch a Friday the 13th movie. Just because it's Friday the 13th and you got to. So, this is Just to Watch the Movies. And you stay classy, YouTube.